Well, we got this story coming to you from England, from a place called Warwickshire. Does it mean anything to you? Okay, let me warm it up even further. Gaiden. No? Well, just stick around with us. We're going to learn and see a lot of Stratford upon Avon. It's a place that's famous for well, Shakespeare. He was born here. It's a must go for literary enthusiasts, but this is the Autocar Show. So here's another clue. Gaiden. If you wiki Gaiden, then you will see that there is more than just one company that Karthik would love to go to and show you around. Which one? Yes, you guessed it. It's Land Rover. It was a complete treat for Karthik. From meeting the company's who's who to seeing all the cars and getting to know Land Rover inside out. Starting with their cars. Karthik was chewing down on the road and experiencing what Range Rovers are all about. He was rolling around in the vehicle of choice for multi-millionaire footballers, a Range Rover Sport. It was easy to understand what makes it a favorite of these athletes. It's an animal. Now what makes driving the Range Rover Sport an incredible experience is first of all the engine. It's a 5 liter V8 supercharged. So, the second you put your foot down, the needle rises, crosses 2000 and there's this angry sound from the engine and it just hauls you along and other than that the suspension, it's really up to the task, there's a dynamic mode so it just weighs up, feels nice, heavy and plugs it on the road. The Range Rover Sport was truly mind-boggling. Its air suspension proved capable of keeping the 2.6 ton vehicle nice and flat. On tarmac, the Range Rover Sport churns out effortless performance, incredible agility and supreme confidence. It just floored Carthage. And not just that, the 5-litre V8 supercharged motor is also at ease when asked to just move along. If it was so capable on-road, Carthage couldn't help but wonder what it would be like off-road. But before he got off-road, he made sure he spent some time in the regular Range Rover with a diesel motor. It was a very different experience, because he tried out this one from a different seat. Now 90% of Range Rovers are used as chauffeur driven cars. So basically the big guy who spent all the money on the car, sits back, relaxes. That means he's got to have all the luxury and the comfort in the back. This is a big SUV that's actually a limousine, so you've got all the controls here at the back. Just the seat is too far at the back for me right now, so the click of a button and it goes all the way forward even further so there you go I have lots and lots of leg room now other than that you can really chill out because you've also got the backrest recline so just tilt it all the way back settle down nice and comfy for the long journey ahead the Range Rover had made quite an impression Dante could not wait to get to their destination it was a special place indeed we are heading into Land Rover's spiritual home, Eastner Castle, where all Land Rovers have been tested to, you know, get their 4x4 credentials spot on. Eastner Castle is a 5,000 acre property managed by James Harvey Barter. The castle and its lands were passed on to the current generation with one condition, to allow Land Rover, and only Land Rover, to use the incredible trails to test their cars. Well, we've arrived at Eastner Castle and that display tells you exactly what to expect in the next few minutes. Soon everyone set off to tackle the Eastner Grounds. Things sounded off pretty then. Then came the first challenge. A place designed to get you ready for things to come. All cars remained unchanged from road specifications. Even the tyres were the same. And when Karthik saw what lay ahead, he was amazed by the capability of the car. A full crash course on the system gave him a good understanding of how the Land Rover manages it all. Okay, tell us like what all is the information that's being displayed here by the system. Okay, what we've got here um, is telling us um, whether we're in high range or low range. Uh, we're in high range at the moment. Um, gives our suspension settings. Do you want to have a look at that? Do you want to... Let's do that. Okay, into neutral. Okay. Into low range. 
Okay. Okay. So we'll see now. The suspension's raising. We've gone into low range, and uh, you can see the electronic differentials have become active, and they'll be locking up the centre and the rear differential as the vehicle sees necessary to get us over the terrain that we're on. The auto descent control braking system has come on, and you can see our suspension on the movement there. It's also told us we've gone into off-road suspension height. One of the things I notice is like, even though you're very high up, you have a good view of the road ahead, but several times when you're going through terrain, like really tough terrain, it's what's nearby that you really want to okay. look at. Yeah, so we can call up some cameras. So if we go to the home menu, um, press cameras, and we can call up whichever views we want. So if we want the front left-hand corner view, we can press that, press the enlarge, and we can look out that way. And you can see what's on this left-hand corner. We can also pull up two at the same time, so front left and right, enlarge, and that's what's going on in the corners of the vehicle at the moment. Quite useful if you're going into tight areas and you want to see if the bump is about to touch down, and um, we can keep an eye on what's going on. And there's a special camera as well, right? That's uh... Yes, we have. We've got a... Oh, venture cam. That's really cool. So that's like if you're stuck in a spot and you want to see what's happening out there. Yeah, let's, let's say we're, we're off-road driving and we want to see where our wheels have gone or we need some information about what sort of train the tires are on. No problem with uh, sitting the can outside the window, we can see what's going on there. And what are the various uh, terrain modes that are... Uh, five terrain response um, settings we can put the car into. We've got general driving or special programs off. We've got grass, gravel, snow, modern ruts, sand mode, and rock floor mode. So the mechanical bits aren't all that uncommon. But the way it is all put together and how it functions is what makes the Landis a mud and rock bashing expert. It feels just at home here as on the smooth tarmac. If anything, it is even more in its element. In fact, while off-roading, the Range Rover took over completely. Starting didn't have to do anything. The drive mode took care of most things, the suspension clambered over everything in its way, the engine provided enough run to power them through, all this without breaking a sweat. All he had to do was swap modes, steer correctly and use the gas when required. It just took the stress out of rough roading. There were walls to climb and it did, without batting an eyelid. The Range Rover waded through swamps without hesitation and it clambered over rocks effortlessly. Never once did it falter. But would it ground? That's what Karthik thought would happen when these SUVs were taken to a riverbed. And it wasn't at all dry. It was unbelievable. Uh, this is really incredible because that's the exhaust that's underwater and that, look at it, it's just standing still. Zero effort required from the driver, the car is just managing to do that. It's standing still, a normal car would bog down, die and that would be the last of it. You need something to pull it out, but let it go. The Range Rover can wade through 700 millimeters of water and that is a lot. Keep in mind, if you have a Range Rover, don't just dive into the next pool of water without knowing what you're getting into else it will surely drown. After this incredible show of ability, the Land Rovers and Range Rovers went for a well-deserved drink, and so did Carlsing. 